Oh, <laughs> yeah. 
little bit of confusion here. And the reason I say that is the next song, people thought it had to do with light beer. And it's called This Little Light of Mine. <laughs> Nothing to do with beer. And the other one that we're going to sing in a coupling with that song is I Don't Mind Being All Alone.
I, there's no other way to describe it, but the guy was actually sobbing. Actually sobbing on the table and everything. And we sang Carry Me Back to Old Virginia. And after the performance was over, I went up to him and I said, Sir, I couldn't help but notice that you were sobbing in the back when we sang Carry Me Back to Old Virginia. Are you a Virginian? He says, No, I'm a musician. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we have an assistant director by the name of Don Crable who's going to do a couple of songs for us. And these are songs that I'm sure that uh, you're going to enjoy hearing. But first, before we get the uh, assistant director, we have a quartet that just is absolutely <laughs> jumping at the bit to get up here to sing for us. They're called Straight From The Heart. Let's hear it for them. Love 
took an old Civil War song, actually, and brought it up to date by one of the most modern, well-known modern singers. And who was that? Elvis. 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 <laughs> Elvis Presley took that song, and he changed the lyrics and made it a modern hit. So it just lets you know, and by the way, in case anyone is this interested, uh, we have Chuck Whitaker, Jim Riley, Tom Ames, and Dale Schmoder as the members of that quartet. Okay, now I will ask Don to please come up and be ready. We have a couple of songs that he's going to do for us, and Don, by the way, is our assistant chorus director during the evening performances, and he is also a member of the uh, Midday uh, Singers, which is a group of uh, singers from the chorus that are not employed, and it doesn't mean that they can't get a job. <laughs> Most of them are retired, <laughs> leave it at that, and they, uh, we go out and do songs for nursing homes and other places in the afternoon when employed people generally are working. So Don is also the director of the Midday Singers, and Don, we're going to do a first song is going to be a song that was made very famous during World War II by a girl by the name of Doris Kappelhoff. Does that ring a bell with anybody? Well, probably doesn't, but you probably know her better as Doris Day. She changed her name, and she is, by the way, an Ohioan from Cincinnati. And we'll let Don take over, and Sentimental Journey is the song. <coughs>
said to me, do something. Well, here I am. There is some things. This, this is not planned, and I might get the hook for this, but that's all right. There's some things I do need to say. No, I'm not going to tattle on anybody. But boy, boy, the stories I could tell. Anyway, uh, on behalf of Jim Kenney, the director, and uh, Jim Riley, our president, thank you so much for coming out. Uh, you all have busy afternoons, but take Thank you for taking the time and supporting us and being here. And it means so much to all of us. Uh, obviously, we're a senior chorus and some diminishing skills. And you don't know how hard these guys work to sing as well as they do. We have some guys that go to Baldwin Wallace College for learn how to sing better. We just had a, a school of five five nights where guys went to improve their singing. Uh, they take vitamins and pills. <laughs> but to help their breathing, help, help their voice, and all kind of stuff like that, the exercise at home, what all they don't do to sing better. And I have to thank them for that, and they all thank you for supporting us. I could go on. No. 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 There is a. There, there is a something I didn't really say. Um, uh oh. Yeah. This morning I had a, a bout of depression, and and um, I thought, wow, I really don't need this. And then I thought for a second, and I got over, and I put. And my depression was, I was thinking, as we're here today, I'm missing the Browns game. <laughs> but then I got over when I thought, well, well you'd be more depressed to watch the Browns game. <laughs> so anyway, that, that, that's where we're at. And uh, so one other thing, uh, the, Browns, the Browns remind me of the fellow that went to confession. Oh, Anybody no. remember confession? No. <laughs> okay. And he confessed his sins. And the priest listened for a minute, and he thought, he says, well, your sins aren't that bad. He says, what, I, what I'd like you to do is, for your penance at ten our fathers, ten Hail Marys, and watch the rest of the Brown game, the rest of the season. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. I have something else I'm going to do. Someone, what, someone asked me earlier uh, what the parts are, who sings what, and I don't know. <laughs> but I'll, I'll try to. I'll try to. That was us. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Here's what the face is. Isn't that nice, huh? And then the, the leads that sing the melody do this. And then we have the baritones that sing every note nobody else wants. And the tenors. How's that? Great. <laughs> Here we go. That was nice. Okay, one more time, basically. When it started.
this thing. The first one is from the musical and the movie, uh, The Sound of Music. It's a beautiful song. It's a ballad called Edelweiss. And coupled with that is from, you may know the movie, I'll tell you the song, it's As Time Goes By. And in that movie, everybody says, the piano, as somebody goes up to the piano player and says, play it again, Sam. I don't think it's in the movie, though. <laughs> I don't know how they came up with that. But anyway, these are the two songs that we're going to be singing. Oh, 
includes Jack Flanagan, Jim Riley, Frank Koenig, and Dale Schmader. Do one song, but we're going to do it twice because Frank can't sing. <laughs> so. Christy Brinkley doesn't thrill me. Brittany leaves me cold. I don't want a Cindy Crawford or a Marilyn. Sun beats down and runs a tar 
It was based upon uh, something that happened in Boston. Uh, the, I guess the fare had for the MTA, the Metropolitan Transit Authority, had been 10 cents uh, to ride on the, to make your ride. And uh, the legislature or the Metropolitan Transit Authority got together and voted in that you had to pay a little more. So it was 10 cents to still to get on, but you had to pay a nickel more to get off. And this is the story about a man who was not prepared for that extra nickel. Called the MTA. What's that? And he changed for Jamaica Plain. When he got there, the conductor shouted, What more nickel? Charlie couldn't get off of that train. But did he ever return? No, he never returned. And his train is still unlearned. He may ride forever in the streets of Boston. He's the man who never returned. Charlie's wife goes down to the Stony Square station every day. At quarter past two, and through the open window she hands Charlie a sandwich as the train comes rumbling through. Okay, we'll get this after 